You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. I feel like who art ed? Who art ed? Mr. Wood art ed me. <laughs> yeah. Either way, it, it's a big, it works on so many levels. I know. I thought it's a great start. Welcome to Who Arted, where we explore visual arts in an audio medium. I'm your host, Kyle Wood, and today we're going to be looking at Alma Thomas. As always, if you're listening on Amazon Music, Spotify, Good Pods, or anywhere else that supports episode-specific cover art, you can see an image of the artwork with this episode and every episode. Alma Thomas was born September 22, 1891, in Columbus, Georgia. Her family was well-respected in the community. Her father was a businessman, her mother was a dressmaker, her grandfather was a veterinarian and a horse breeder. Alma was the oldest child and had three younger sisters. She grew up in a nice Victorian home on a hill overlooking the town. In many ways, it sounds like an idyllic childhood. She was well-situated to take in the beauty of the surroundings. Of course, that's just part of the picture. In 1907, her family moved to Washington, D.C. They came to that decision after the 1906 Atlanta race riots. While her family had been successful and respected within their community, it was still a segregated community. Schools did not allow black children to study past junior high. In D.C., they hoped for better opportunities. Alma Thomas would later say, quote, When I was a little girl in Columbus, there were things we could do and things we couldn't. One of the things we couldn't do was go into museums, let alone thinking of hanging our pictures there. And yet, in 1972, she became the first African-American woman to have a solo show at the Whitney Museum of American Art. But that would come later. As I said, in 1907, her family moved to Washington, D.C., hoping for better opportunities, Her family really valued education, and so she went on to college. She went to Howard University, and in 1924, she was the first graduate of their new art department. She later went on to get a Master's of Arts in Columbia University, but her first career was teaching. She continued pursuing her own art, and one thing I absolutely love, she also created opportunities for her students. She led a group of students that would meet on Saturday mornings. That is dedication, giving up your weekend time to help middle school students make their own artwork. Of course, we don't tend to make podcasts about people who are just great teachers. Maybe we should, but she was a teacher and also a great artist. She continued pursuing her arts, taking classes at American University in Washington. She showed her work at group exhibitions with other African-American artists. But while she obviously experienced setbacks as a black woman, I mean, her family left their hometown, her work was not taking on feminist or racial themes. In some of her works, there were hints of the civil rights movement. I have seen paintings of abstracted figures holding placards, but that type of work just didn't click with her. She didn't want to make political art. Perhaps this is just me falling into the trap of assuming that others think like I do, but her work has a meditative quality that feels like it's more about her internal world than the outside world. I realize, of course, the irony of saying that when so much of her work was inspired by nature. I also recognize that some people would say all art is on some level political, and that her asserting herself as an artist first rather than allowing her identity as a black woman to force her into focusing on a narrow band of subjects was also a sort of a political statement. But I stand by my assessment that her work, these abstractions, were more about nature and trying to capture that feeling. It's odd how there's sort of simultaneously a calm and a peace and a stillness, but also a vibrant energy radiating from the canvas. I think one of the most inspiring things about her biography, though, is that Alma Thomas rose to prominence as an artist 
after three decades of teaching junior high. While others were retiring, she was just getting started. She continued pursuing her passion and demonstrated it is never too late to learn, to grow, and develop your talents. In 1966, Alma Thomas was, what, like 75 years old. Howard University offered to put on a retrospective show of her work. At that point, she was actually considering giving up painting due to arthritis pain. But it was a tremendous opportunity. And she wanted to produce something new. She looked out her window and she was struck by the color. She watched the sunlight shift the colors on the trees and the flowers in her garden, and she began working in a more expressionistic, abstract style. This is the type of work that she became best known for. These abstract pieces have almost mosaic-like splashes of colors, somewhat like the Impressionists, but also borrowing a bit from color field painters, There's this hard-edged, somewhat geometric styling to it. These works are far more abstract, but most importantly, the colors are just so bold and saturated, and the combinations of colors that she creates have a vibrant effect that just leaps off the canvas. While I could talk about the formal qualities way longer than anyone would care to listen, I think her paintings are more about the mood, the expressive qualities. It's all about the vibes. And I want to end this episode with Alma's own words. She said, The use of color in my paintings is of paramount importance to me. Through color, I've sought to concentrate on beauty and happiness, rather than on man's inhumanity to man. I think that's why her work feels so timeless. Because we would all always be better off if we took time to concentrate on beauty and on happiness. This concludes this week's episode of Who Arted, part of the Airwave Media Podcast Network. If you found this tolerable, please leave a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. You can find images of the work being discussed this week and every week on social media at Who Arted Podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And of course, on the website, whoartedpodcast.com. Podcast done.